本节目由行政院农业委员会渔业署委托制播。The following program is brought to you by the Fisheries Agency under the Council of Agriculture. 
Progressive groups and activists have also long rallied against an anti-terrorism act, which analysts and human rights watchdogs have warned chills freedom of expression. Their work, he said, is an overbroad definition of terrorism. The anti-terrorism act faces 37 petitions before the Supreme Court contesting the law's constitutionality and effect on human rights. The SC held oral arguments on the petitions, questioned the law, but has yet to decide on the pleas. The Guzman has not been shy about his plans to reallocate presidential intelligence funds to a COVID-19 pandemic and economic fund to buttress the country's recovery from the world's longest quarantine. We're moving to Taiwan with a talk about COVID-19 border restrictions. Several foreign missions in Taiwan are urging the government to ease its strict COVID-19 border control measures that they say are hurting people-to-people exchanges and the running of businesses. They made the appeal in response to CNA inquiries on how the border controls have affected their respective countries' exchanges with Taiwan amid growing concerns voiced privately by foreign offices and businesses here over the restrictive measures. Taiwan has maintained strict entry requirements since March 2020, generally banning most arrivals except for citizens and foreign residents and requiring those who do enter the country to undergo stringent 14-day quarantines. Though the rules have been adjusted marginally over the past 18 months, depending on the progression of the disease, they have been particularly tight since May 19, 2021, after Taiwan experienced a surge in domestic COVID-19 cases. At present, exceptions to the visitor ban can only be made in emergencies or for humanitarian reasons. But in such circumstances, those involved are required to apply in advance to the Central Epidemic Command Center for permission to enter the country. Asked about the controls, the French office in Taipei, the country's representative office in Taiwan, told CNA that the French community in Taiwan was grateful for these measures that make us safer here than any other part of the world. It called on local authorities, however, to consider gradually relaxing the restrictions to allow for the entry of more international travelers, especially those who are fully vaccinated. The suspension of visas has had an impact on French companies operating in Taiwan, causing disruptions to their workforces, the office said in an email response to CNA, Central News Agency. They cannot either bring in the foreign experts they need for the implementation of certain critical projects, in particular in the manufacturing industry, semiconductors in particular, but also in transport infrastructure projects like the metro or in the energy sector uh, like offshore wind power, the office said. The controls have also made it harder for the French office to complete tests dependent on people-to-people contacts and exchanges. With the vaccination rate in Taiwan rising, the office said it was hopeful that we'll see very soon some easing of the current restrictions that would allow us to resume programs and exchanges between France and Taiwan while still keeping us safe. Echoing that view, Germany's representative office in Taiwan, the German Institute Taipei, said German companies needed experts to enter Taiwan to keep businesses going and implement new projects. In the offshore wind sector, for, for instance, the border restrictions are very counterproductive as projects cannot be completed on time. Educational institutions are also feeling the pinch, the office said. The German section of the European school is still short of three new teachers who cannot come to Taiwan because their family members are not allowed to accompany them, the office told CNA. As with the French and German offices, the European Economic and Trade Office said it understood the need for strict measures to fight the pandemic. But there is a clear sense within the international community here, diplomats, expats, students, families, that Taiwan is missing out on people-to-people contacts. It is much more difficult to bring in staff and their families from abroad. Everybody is looking forward to more flexible measures so that normal exchanges can resume, it said. Singapore's top envoy to Taiwan, Yip Wai Shared similar concerns. 
after the COVID-19 situation in Singapore and Taiwan had stabilized in late 2020. Singapore unilaterally opened its borders to travelers from Taiwan, the envoy said. Here we're going to break for a song. This is by New Yorker. The song is Reni Kai Xin, Make You Happy. Back to Taiwan with a new story. This is an update to the Harvard Taipei Academy. The decision to move a Harvard University study abroad program from Beijing to Taipei starting next summer will allow participants to broaden their experiences. This is according to a spokesman for the Harvard Division of Continuing Education. The U.S. University decided to relocate the summer program from Beijing Language and Culture University in the Chinese capital to Taipei's National Taiwan University. Responding to a request for comment from the Central News Agency, Sarah Pierre, DCE Associate Director of Communications, said in an email that the new arrangement presents a different opportunity for our instructors and learners to broaden their educational experiences. The associate director added that the decision reflects a wide array of operational factors. According to an October 7th report in the Harvard Crimson, the program's director, Jennifer Liu, said the program was relocated because of a perceived lack of friendliness from the host institution in Beijing. Liu told the Crimson that the program planners had experienced difficulties accessing the classrooms and dorms they needed uh, at the Beijing University and also that they were told in 2019 they could no longer hold a party celebrating the U.S. Independence Day on July 4th. Given the condition they provided, we really couldn't run the program with the quality that we are hoping to deliver to our students, Leo said. Leo suspects that the unwelcoming environment may be due to a change in the Chinese government's attitude toward U.S. institutions. According to the DCE website, the program, the summer program in Taipei, will incorporate the same rigorous language curriculum while providing participants the opportunity to immerse in the dynamic and diverse society and culture of Taiwan. Meanwhile, National Taiwan University told CNA a total of 60 participants selected for the program are expected to attend the eight-week program at NTU from June 24th to August 20th, 2022. In addition to offering Chinese language lessons, the program will also include field trips to famous tourist attractions in northern Taiwan and a series of cultural activities, according to NTU. And that's it for Philippines and Friends. I'm Shirley Lena, Radio Taiwan International. And I'm going to sign up with this song by Wang Ruolin of Taiwan, Joanna Wang. The song is in English, The Greatest Stink. This program has been brought to you by the Fisheries Agency under the Council of Agriculture.